Do you follow Magic Johnson on Twitter? He's got the worst tweet. He should be at Captain Obvious. He's like, hey, Laker fans, the sky is blue, and the Lakers will win if they score more points than the other team. <laughs> why, why even bother tweeting? Coming to you pre-tape from the Best Coast Show studios, this is the Best Coast Show. I'm your host, Albert Aguilera. That's my producer, Curtis Sage. Curtis, this last week, both the Kings and the Lakers drafted the future, and I have no idea who any of these kids are, and I can't even pronounce their names. Yeah, half the kids, their names are difficult. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, Albert, this is going to be a Lakers-Kings episode, combo episode. Uh, we're going to talk about the draft. We're going to talk about uh, the youth movement for the Lakers is continuing. We are going to talk about the Kings draft and a little bit about free agency. Not a whole lot because we're going to have John Rosen in next week on next week's episode. The Kings, uh, you know, they were fifth in the Western Conference. So what kind of things do we see happening from this draft? What do we need? What kind of uh, what kind of positional players? Lakers, we know what they need. We everything. need to, we need <laughs> we need everything, especially a score, big time score. So let's get started. All right, guys, so the Kings and the Lakers just had their draft. Uh, the Lakers had the second overall pick. They took Brandon Ingram. Um, I think we're going to have to, you know, coin the, the nickname Daddy Long Legs because he, he's all, like, lanky and, like, yeah. skinny. And they're comparing him to Kevin Durant. And I, I, I questioned his choice of jacket because it was a little too a little too fresh for me. Yeah, it was fresh. I don't think I could pull that off, though. No. But apparently he is going to be our – he's 18 years old. He's going to be our uh, – our guy of the future, he was the, according to a lot of experts, he was the best player in college basketball this last year, best player available in the draft, and we got fortunate enough to take him. Yeah, I mean, with the number two pick, we're going to get one of two players, Simmons or or Ingram, and I was a big fan of Ingram. I was excited because he can, this kid can flat out score. He reminds everybody of Kevin Durant, which is great. He's got a huge wingspan. I mean, this guy's got like super long arms. He looks really awkward, right? He was yeah, walking up like, there and like his, like, his hands were all the way down to his knees and he looked yeah. like a caricature. So he's exciting. Here's the deal. I mean, this is a, we know what we've got with this team right now. We've got a young team that we're looking to fill in some free agents, and we'll talk about that in a second. But, you know, Ingram's going to probably get a lot of playing time. He may start. Uh, most likely he'll start. I don't he's, see why he wouldn't. He's probably going to be better right, than Byron anybody. Byron Scott's not the coach anymore, right? Yeah, Byron Scott's So that means the that the kids get to play. Yeah, the kids are going to play. Luke Walton will kind of get this new offense kind of flowing. And I think Ingram's a smart kid. He went to Duke, so he's got good that basketball. That doesn't necessarily mean he's smart. That just means he was really, really, really talented. Okay. So Coach K brought him over. True. Um, but So I think Laker fans are excited about him. Is he the superstar player that the Lakers need in Los Angeles? That remains to be a question. That's a question. Well, that's what we're missing. Now that Kobe Bryant's no longer on the team, we don't have a face of the franchise. And every every bitch-ass free agent that we're trying to get out here is afraid of the spotlight. They're yeah. afraid of living in the shadow are they? of Kobe Bryant. They are. No, that's right. Uh, the Brian Howard. That's why freaking Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard couldn't take like, it. I can't, I can't take the heat. And Shaq yeah. called him out on that bullshit, too. Marcus Aldridge wouldn't come because he come. couldn't take it? Yeah. And you have so you saying Kevin Durant? can't take it of being the face of the Lakers Kevin franchise. Kevin Durant's having trouble being successful in Oklahoma City where I don't I'm sure that the population of Los Angeles County is is larger than the population of the entire state of Oklahoma. It is. It is. And yeah. it's like what, what do you I don't think you would be able to handle the spotlight in Los Angeles. You need a guy with charisma. He doesn't strike me as that kind of guy. You need a guy with a big personality, a guy that is going to put asses in the seats, not just because, you know, let, let's be honest, Lakers fans. A lot of you guys claim to be Lakers fans. You're probably not even Lakers fans. A lot of people go to Lakers games just so oh, they can say they're Lakers fans. Just so they can say they went to Lakers games because oh, this is this is what's going on in a lot of Lakers games. This is this is right here. For those of you listening in on the podcast and can't hear me, I'm pulling out my cell phone and I'm taking pictures of myself. Hey, look, hashtag Lakers, hashtag floor seats. It's like, bitch, I know you can't afford those tickets. Who are you escorting with? But it's the, the tarnish is wearing off a little bit on that. And I mean, the Lakers are a scene and be seen, you know, that that's an event. We know that. But if the Lakers don't have a bona fide star like Kevin Durant, people aren't going to fill the seats as much with those expensive tickets. Well, right. And these kids are all between the ages of 18 and 23, minus Swaggy, who's like 33. And I hope yeah. we amnesty he's our him. Vet. He's, this our, is, he's our vet. He's our vet. This is scary when Swaggy P is our vet. He's get, he's the guy who's supposed to be like mentoring these kids. Not the best idea. Not a good idea. But these idea. guys are all between the ages of 18 and 23. So they are going to grow. I mean, Kobe Bryant was a 17-year-old when we yeah. drafted him. But we had a veteran team but around. But we did have a veteran team. Right. 
We and had one guy that was, and he didn't start his first year. He didn't play that much. So it took a little while for Kobe to get into the NBA and NBA ready. We knew he was going to be great, just like I think everybody well, knows Ingram's going to be I think Randall and Russell are going to get a lot more playing time this year. I mean, right now we only have eight guys on the roster, yeah, and we have $65 million in open cap space. So no matter what, they have to get to at least 11 guys on this roster because they're going to have to put 12, 13 total because someone's going to get hurt. Yeah. And you're, you're going to, by default, need that one guy that always shows up in a suit and sits on the bench because he's— yeah. Well, that's that's Sacre. That's Robert Sacre. Oh, I thought it was Derrick Rose. No, well, that's yes. <laughs> uh, let's not forget before we move on to to free agents with the Lakers. Let's not forget our number two pick, the number thirty two pick in the draft, the Croatian now, sensation, gonna, Ivica Zubac. Is that? Am I even close? Maybe Ivica. I, I Zubac? looked up his Wikipedia, and the Wikipedia says Zubut. Zubut. Z u b u t s. But it's he's but, from Croatia. But he's from from Croatia. So Iv- I'm going to say Ivica Zub. What did you say? Zubac. Zubac sounds like, good. That sounds I, good. I know a guy named Michael Zubac, and he spells his last name the exact same way. Oh. So I read it as Zubac, but he's also like a white guy from America, not a Croatian sensation like Ivica. Okay, so Ivica. And I don't know anything about this guy. I don't know anything about uh, Ingram either. All I know is that he went to Duke <laughs> and he played basketball because I don't watch college basketball. Yeah, Nobody watched watches bu- college basketball. You know who watches college basketball? Me. College students and people who live in small towns because well, they have col- nothing better to do. I, I, I'm i neither of those. No, you and, and I, I well, okay, maybe you watch it regularly, yeah. but I'm I'm the third party in this, in this conversation where it's kind of like, hey, it's March Madness. Fill out your bracket. That's when I start paying attention. Yeah, to college when money's basketball. involved. When money's involved, <laughs> I'm a degenerate gambler. No one's no no one saw Zubac or and sorry, Avika, if we're screwing up your name, and we probably are because we'd screw up everybody. Well, it doesn't name. matter. He won't be here this year anyways because he's he's with his Serbian team through yeah. the 2017-2018 season. In the event that he makes the roster for the Lakers, he has an opt out clause in his Serbian contract and then come play. But he's seven one and he looks good. That's he doesn't, great. He, and if he doesn't do well on the court, maybe the Kings can put him on skates and he could be like our Chara. Well, here's, <laughs> here's what's pretty good. He was a Laker fan growing up. He Everyone was, was a super, Laker fan growing up. Yeah. He was super excited about getting drafted by the Lakers. He's dusting off his Kobe Bryant jersey, apparently. I don't know if that number fits Number eight him. or number 24. I don't know which one he has. Uh, he was very excited. He's a big kid. He's... He's pretty athletic. Uh, well, so, he averaged double double in international play. What does that mean exactly? I don't means, know. That means six points and three re- rebounds. No, in the no, no. NBA. He was he was according to this, he's averaging fifteen point eight points per game and twelve point nine rebounds per game in I'll international competitions. But these international competitions were the nineteen U eighteen U teams. So he's going to be good in three or four years too. I think he was. So a this good team draft will pick. be good in three years. Well, that's. Will we make the playoffs this year? No, no, not even close. We'll probably. What be about the, next year? Maybe. Possibly. Possibly. No, but legitimately, this team could be a legitimate Western Conference contender in three, in years. three years when our 18, 19 year olds are 21, 22, and they've grown into their bodies. Exactly. And maybe Ingram has gained 20 pounds because he, he is six, what, what is he, 6'9, 6'10? Yeah. He's 6'10 and he weighs less than 200 pounds. I'm 5'8, 180. He's got like a waist, a model of a weight, you know, like a, yeah, totally. he's got like a, a model's a waist. Leg. Like his waist is like a model. He looks like a, he looks like a <laughs> character in a Tim Burton movie. He does. He's a damn good basketball player, though. But so I here's the so. thing. But he's this team is not going to make a dent in free agency either. Here's the problem. We got money. Laker fans think. Look at. Not only did Laker fans think that we were getting to Kevin Durant a while ago, a lot of them. But Jim Buss still thinks that they have we a chance. We, we've at discussed getting, this before. We don't care what Jim Buss thinks. He was like, I'll be surprised. I'm shocked if we don't get at least an interview with Kevin Durant. Why would he interview with us? And and today it's it just because, came out. No, it's because the Lakers, like the Yankees, are like the hot chick at school who thinks she can pick up on any guy. And the one time that the one guy's like, I'm not interested. She's like, oh. Yeah. The Lakers shouldn't We're even We're fishing have, for compliments. But here's the problem. The Lakers shouldn't even have been, been saying they were interested in Durant in the first place. So we should have played hard to get? We should have been playing hard to get. Like, no, we're not really interested in Durant. We're going in a different direction. And that direction should have been towards DeMar DeRozan, which he's going to stay in Toronto, apparently. Listen, Toronto's a nice metropolitan. I hear that the women in Toronto are very attractive. I'm sure they are. Like, they can compete with the women of Los Angeles. That's what I've heard. But the dude is from L.A. He went to USC. He was a Laker fan growing up, allegedly. Allegedly. (laughs) So why wouldn't you come back to Los Angeles and play for your hometown team? That's saying something. He doesn't want want the LeBron pressure. He doesn't want—I mean, think about it. I mean, this is me. If I'm an elite-level athlete, the only place I want to play is for the team that I grew up for. Even if the team sucks, I'm going to try to make my home team better. But the the amount of pressure that goes into that— 
And think about it. You you live in Chase Los, Utley's under no you pressure. In, you live in Los Angeles. He's playing he for the Dodgers. He built his right? legacy in Philadelphia, yeah, destroying fuck. the Dodgers in the playoffs. That jerk. <laughs> but we like him now. We okay. love the Silver Fox. Yeah. yeah. But t-shirt ha- t-shirt pending. Silver Fox. Silver Fox. <laughs> yeah. So now you have this guy that was born and raised in Los Angeles. He grew up a Lakers fan. It's like his 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 hero is gonna have a statue built there and have you know the the Raptors yeah. with the uh, with the jersey and you look up and you see all these banners right next to the Taylor Swift banner and the Kings banners and you're like wow that's a lot to live up to so can I handle it? it then on top of that you also have all your friends and family bugging you for tickets every week okay that's true I okay so that. forget I would hate that. so DeRozan was I thought but what about players like Mike Connolly or Horford Al Horford I mean LeBron. They're not even... <laughs> No, LeBron's not coming to LA. They're no. not even talking about Al Horford, and he would be perfect. But the problem with Horford is he's already thirty. He's going to want to go to a team like Golden State or Oklahoma where he City, can try to win now. Where he can win now. He's not going to come to a young team. So Horford's out. Mike Connolly would be a good pick pickup, of course. He's an All Star. He's a really great player, but he plays point guard. So then, what do you do with D'Angelo Russell? He's done. Then, then they trade Russell. So I mean, they're not going to go after Connolly now. We get Hassan Whiteside. Look, Laker fans, you didn't even know who Hassan Whiteside was. I had no was. idea who that was. He's one of the top rebounders in the league. Maybe. But, and defensive players, but allegedly, but he's only played two years. So we're going to give a cap to him or somebody like Harrison Barnes? I, but I, Yeah, I also would not give someone like that Max Steel money. Why? Because it's not a superstar, the, right? And then this year and next year, it's like we discussed earlier in the in the year or last year during the regular season. Because the cap space goes up so much this year and next year, you're going to see a lot of mediocre players making way year. more money than they should. And, and so they're they going to be one on, year deal. And they're going to do one year deals this year, so that next year they can have that uh, that home team type of thing where you can then get an additional year on your max contract. Because you can only do that with the team that you're currently signed with. So Laker fans, w- get used to we're not going to get Horford, Conley, Durant. The, the arguably You're telling the top, Laker fans, be ready for a couple of years of more years of depression. So here's yes, exactly. So yeah, here's who we're going to get. Los Angeles and Zoloff just runs like like crazy here. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Prozac <laughs> Nation. <laughs> so who who are we going to get? We're going to get guys like Timothy Mozgov. Albert, do you know who that is? No idea. So he's a serviceable guy. We're going to get okay. Here's a good. This is an L.A. dude, Chandler Parsons. I know who that is. He's a good looking guy. He would fit well. He's in commercials and stuff. He wants to you know good he wants to be an like actor. Jeff Carter, good looking. Maybe, maybe better than Jeff Carter, what? if that's possible. I don't, I don't know. We'll get to Kings. We'll get to Kings talk in a second. So we're gonna, we're talking about like Mario Chalmers. I mean, are Laker fans, are you ready to spend thousands of dollars to go to Staples Center to see who spends thousands of dollars to go to Laker games? Well, if you're sitting close, if you're buying four seats and uh, and it's two hundred a pop, and then you're buying that's, refreshments. That's but Chalmers is only making four million bucks. Like this isn't he, a guy that's gonna demand twenty all of a sudden. Okay, even but, if you double him up and get him to eight, nine, ten. Oh, we'll get him. He'll he'll be asking for twelve or fifteen from the Lakers. I time to go kick rocks. I mean, we maybe we're bringing back <laughs> Brandon Bass, who was good, but he's not putting anybody in the seats. The Lakers are gonna need, we need to get star power, and they're not gonna get it. We're I mean, we're it's L.A. We're I, I'll be the first person to to tell you. Now I'll, I'll tell everybody this: I am extremely shallow. Yeah, if, you if, are. If you are not going to be bringing in something like that, then the fans won't go. And like I told you, a lot of there there are fans like the people that watch our show. You guys, you know the stats, you know the players, you know the history. You were there when Mike Bibby and and Kobe Bryant were fighting with each other in the early two thousands. And some yeah. of you are even older, like Curtis and saw the Showtime Lakers. I'm aging you there. Yes. But a lot fine. of a lot of the the Instagram generation and and you know these kids go to Laker games so they can say that they went to a Laker game. Yeah. They don't give a fuck or even know who's playing. Well, the. And the thing is, is the NBA is star powered anyway. It's the most star star right. powered league because that's why LeBron gets all the calls, he, and why Curry gets all the calls. Yeah, they. And get I'd calls. have to imagine LeBron James is six eight, two hundred and like seventy five pounds, and this guy's a fucking bitch. If you tell He's, me that I can like look at you and you go flying across the room, could you imagine if he played a real sport like no, you know he does like mixed martial arts? Uh, LeBron or, doesn't or flop. hockey or football. That's Le- embarrassing. LeBron doesn't flop. Embarrassing. He doesn't flop. He embarrassing. Doesn't flop. Um, okay, so let's. Uh, so Laker fans, just be ready for. I'm not going to say misery because I think things are looking brighter. But be what optimistic? Optimistics about our. I don't because because we play in the West. I don't think we'll make the playoffs. If we played in the East, I would say yeah, legitimately with the seven guys we currently have on the roster plus whoever we can grab in free agency a vet or two we can contend for an eight seed in the west or i'm sorry in the east but not in the west no no we are a playoff team in two to three years and is that okay with laker fans no I mean, that's what laker we need fans to... are like yankee fans they want to win now and they expect to win every year well that's because we all we've always as done dodger that. fans i don't expect to ever win i just hope we win but we're not as bad as the cubs no 
No. Not All as right. bad as the Let's Cubs. talk about the Kings. Let's talk about a a real a real sport where <laughs> where the Shut men up, where the men fight and punch each other and don't don't flop and cry and complain about everything. We have a lot more Laker fans that watch the Best Coast Show than Kings fans. I'm do just going to let you know. I think so. Probably I think but we do. The Laker fans don't like me. The There's, King fans like me though. The, okay. they, they, they actually Laker say, fan. They actually say hello to me at Staples Center when Laker they see me. Laker fans like me. They they don't like you. True. They will like you. Eventually. They will like you. They'll learn they, to love they'll me. They'll learn to like They'll you. learn to love me. <laughs> Anyways, guys, yeah, so the Kings went out. They uh, they went into the draft, and they didn't do a goddamn thing. We did not have a number one uh, round draft because we traded that away to the Hurricanes and the Sakara deal. That came back, bit us in the ass. We didn't pick till like, 51, 52. But we got it, Kale Clack. Is that how you pronounce his name? I have no yeah, fucking we're, idea. Yeah, we're having trouble pronouncing these these uh, Canadian kids. Clique? Clique. Whatever. Kale's going to do well in Los Angeles because Kale's a very uh, popular, popular dish item here yeah. in Los Angeles. So it's healthy. Very, it's healthy for you. Superfood. And the Kings went after this guy because, uh, you know, you all know that we've been lacking the defensive department ever since Slava decided to punch his wife in the face and then self-deports and blah, blah, blah. And... This guy, apparently, according to the scouting report and to Dean Lombardi, the reason they went after this kid is that they felt that as a defenseman, he was a defenseman in the draft with the highest IQ. Not, but, not an available defenseman. Okay. In the entire draft, they felt that this kid as a defenseman had the highest, high, uh, highest hockey IQ. Here's the problem with that. He's 5'11", and he's 185 pounds? He can get a little bigger, and he's, all, how old is he? he's like 20 years old. He's a little guy. That's that's not that big for hockey. I mean, I guess when you get the pads on, well, you're not everyone, not everyone's Chara, but I mean, you're five yeah. eleven. I, I, the league is no longer mid eighties, mid nineties, early two thousands goon type league where yeah, there's fights, but you're not just trying to wreck guys. But, and he's a two way defenseman, so is. you're okay. not looking for someone that's just gonna be a goon. So and, he has some and speed. Eat up minutes. So he has some speed. Right, and he's got good hands. He's he's got he's a puck handler, so he has the hockey IQ that the Kings are looking for. Well, we do. We have scored a lot of goals from defensemen being in the back and, and making great passes up into the middle and up to the front, and that that's 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 what they would need. And yeah. I mean, our forwards play the same way. Our our forwards are two way forwards. We're we're not. A lot of our forwards look like defensemen, actually. That is true because <laughs> they they fight, and yeah. I don't want to say they're goons. I mean, maybe really the only two goons that we had on the team last year were Lucic and Andrioff. They're very physical forwards that and just like to punch people in the face. And we're not going to have Lucic back. No, because like a jerk, this is why we didn't want him in the first place, because we were upset that he'd come here, play out his contract like he said he would on that fucking radio that's interview. What he said. And then he would leave us, and that's exactly what he did. We opened our arms and our hearts and our city and our weather <sighs> to Milan, and we fell in love with him, and he's breaking up with us, and he can go fuck himself. <laughs> Granted, he hasn't signed with anybody else yet. Did you look into the camera and tell tell him that personally? That, that's you were looking terrible, at me. Milan. That's terrible. You were looking at me. When I was you said looking that. at you. But I want you to look I'm at the very camera. Sad. And... I'm very sad. I'm very sad. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm disappointed. You know what? I'm not. I'm not upset. I'm just disappointed. Disappointed. I'm just disappointed. Disappointed. Well, we didn't win. No, we didn't win. But I think if he if we had won a Stanley Cup last year, Dean Lombardi would have given him an eight year deal. And that was the issue with, the, from what I'm hearing and understanding, the deal with uh, Milan was that the money was there. The per King, year. Yeah, the Kings were, hey, you want X amount of money? We're good. Okay, that's cool. No worries. But Milan wanted a max deal. The Kings didn't want to go more than four. What would the max deal be? I believe it's seven years with your home team or eight. And I'm like, listen, fuck that. He would have been 35? I would, when... Yeah, he's 28 years old. I'm like, listen, fuck that. We don't need another no. Mike Richards contract 30%. on our hands that's no. still fucking us till like 2032. Well, because... Lucic doesn't take drugs across well, the board. You know, we don't know that. Not... Okay. But it's a hard cap <laughs> league. It's a hard cap league with yeah. guaranteed money. This isn't the NFL where I can guarantee you all the money in the world or promise you money in the world and then say, you know what, Curtis? I'm cutting you. And then, oh, you jack shit. Yeah. So what if what if he was amazing for the next year or two and then suddenly he sucked at the age of 30? We'd be fucked. And he and there's a and possibility we, we, play, he, we play this far off the cap every year. Yeah. We're a team that's living a couple thousand dollars under the cap every year. And but now we have 6.7, 6.6 million dollars to play with. So do we need to go So this draft are any of the other three guys? Well, I let's mean, let's th we had four picks. We had four picks this year. Yeah. Okay. Three of the four picks were defensemen. We took one center. Uh I and look, the NHL draft, like the MLB draft, means nothing to me because I don't know who these fucking people no, are. Because no. I don't watch the KHL or the OHL or whatever other minor league Canadian system or apparently college hockey. You don't watch college hockey? No, not till the Frozen Four starts happening. Um, and apparently, uh, in this draft, a lot of kids from Finland were taken in the first round. I don't watch Finnish hockey. Where is Finland? On a map, <laughs> on a map, it's like in the Scandinavia area. Okay, I okay, think. Okay. I think they're one of the happy countries, though, right? Yes, but I, I hear that the women in Finland are very attractive as well. Mm. So Toronto and Finland, we've established today, we think, 
because neither of us have been to I've those cities. I've never been to either city so, or well, country. Finland's not a city. Yeah, okay. So, all right. So, what about the other three? I mean, we're not, they're not going to see the light of day at this point, probably. Not right now, but I'm trying to see. This guy, Jacob Friend, we drafted him in the seventh round. He's a defenseman from Canada. Jacob Friend. We're going to have a lot of pun fun with that. But his his last name, we may not even be pronouncing this correctly because be he's French. It, it could, could be, be Friand. Friand. Like, you don't pronounce the Ds. Yeah. Spelled friend like he's my friend. But... And then Michael Essamont, he's a, he's a center. Oh, wait, he's an American. So it might be Essamont. Yeah, and then it's... Jacob Ma, Mo, Move, Move Rare, Move Rare, he's Swedish, so I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, too. You are definitely pronouncing also that. Also a defenseman, but he's 6'2", 198 pounds. Two Jacobs and a Kale. What's going on and here? And a friend. Well, but two Jacob Jacobs friend. and a Kale? This I sounds don't very like, I, I have no play idea who, I have from... no idea who the fuck these kids are. So we reached. <laughs> I reached out to our friend Lindsay Zarneski. She's the rain insider. Because yeah. she's going to end up covering these guys. Because oh, yeah. these guys are going to go into our minor league system. So she's doing background checks on them, making sure that, that they're going to be something that maybe we can trade or we might eventually play in our, in our system. So this coming year, because we're so cash-strapped, yeah. We might see a lot of these kids from Ontario come up and play. We Maybe. might see uh, Dowd and Andrea full time. We might see Gravel full time. We might see um, oh Kempy hasn't played with us at all, but we might bring him up. And you know the way that people compare him, the way Lindsay talks about him on the internet, yeah, yeah. is that they compare him to being a younger Jeff Carter type, even more handsome. What? And I don't know if that's How? possible. What? I don't know. Well, that's just what I'm hearing on the Twitterverse <laughs> that that Adrian Kempy has the skill set of Jeff Carter and is only better looking wow. and younger. Wow. So the ladies of Los Angeles, look Get out. Get ready. Well. Let, let me ask this. I mean, we need a backup. Set, we need a backup keeper. We, yeah, we, need we need a goalie, and we also need a, we need a really strong defenseman in free agency, right? I mean, so. But there's nobody available. We, I was Who do really, you want? I, well, personally, I was really hoping that Yonda would not have signed with Florida, and then uh, Florida would have given up that draft pick for yeah. no reason whatsoever. Yeah, and, and we, he because and he would have gone to free agency, and mm. then we would have picked up Yondo. It was if it was hey. Uh, we have money for Lucic or Yondo. I'd be like, Yondo, 100%. We, we yeah. have forwards in our minor league system, and then we can always trade for a forward or whatever. I mean, granted, now that Lucic is in here, we don't have, we don't have our top six set up. Um, so I, Mersh, I'm hoping Mersh might get to get, uh, might play more in, in our system this year. Who knows? But I think a lot of that's going to be that these kids are going to get playing time, not because Daryl Sutter is a, uh, a believer of the minor league systems no. or the youth, kind of like Byron Scott. Yeah. But the difference being that Daryl Sutter has won championships. Byron Scott never did. Yeah. But he's not a fan of, of playing the kids. This year, he might have to play the kids because we are cash strapped. Yeah. And I mean, out in Vancouver, Hamus. Is, is, is a free agent, and That's, he played within our division, so we're familiar with him. And I he's think a two-way he's, player. He's a two-way player. He's the Willie Mitchell type. I think he's 32, and he's not going to destroy our cap. So he wouldn't ask for as much money as Lucic or years. I mean, he's not going to ask for eight years. That's for sure. Yeah, and he's not going to command the amount of money that Yondo would. I believe Yondo signed for $6.6 million. So yeah. he and and he may want to stay on the West Coast anyways, right? You know, in, instead of moving over to the East. Um, well, what a, what about the expansion draft? I mean, is that going to help us out a little, or it might help us get rid of contracts that we don't want? Oh. But the yeah. expansion draft coming up with the team in Las Vegas, which I'm very excited for because I, I go to Vegas regularly, so yeah. to be able to go watch a, a hockey What's game. What's the name of the team going to be? They don't have a name yet. So we start that? It might. We... It, it, they're leaning towards the Black Knights because the ownership group that owns Black it. Black Knights. Right. That's the ownership that owns it, owns a, their firm as the Black Knights, so that's how they're kind of pitching it. I don't know. Um, but the expansion <laughs> draft that's coming up is going to allow NHL teams to protect seven forwards, three defensemen, one goalie. So... Yeah, you know, Anaheim just moved one of their goalies. I believe that they were smart to do that because going into the trade deadline, a lot of people are going to be moving goalies because you can either it? move it and get something for them, or accidentally have him drafted in the that'd be bad in the yeah. expansion draft. Yeah. Okay. Well, so that's. I mean, you know, we're a little we're a little tight with the Kings coming up, but we're going to talk to John Rosen next. Yeah, John week. Rosen's going to come on next week, and he's going to let us know. It's going to be after the July first uh, UFA type mm -hmm. of thing, and we'll see. If the Kings do something with free agency, if we move players, if we move bodies, if he has any idea who the Kings might not want to protect in the expansion draft, like maybe Gabrick or Brown or inflated yeah. contracts that we have. I can't imagine We need that. money. It's I know, so, but it's Gabrick? So, it's Brown? It's so not fair. It I mean, is, maybe Brown, I can see. It is so not fair that playing in California, we get fucked over by the by yeah. the sports tax and the state income tax that we have to overpay players to play here, which hurts our cat. The NHL and you know uh, governing bodies for professional sports should give teams 
uh, based on their state income tax and their state athlete tax yeah. exemptions towards their cap. It should be a sliding like, scale. Exactly. New it's York like, and, La- uh, and California. Because if you're going to tell me that we have to adjust the cap based on the Canadian dollar, that's telling me that you're favoring these fucking Canadian teams. Exactly. Well, why don't you help out teams in California, specifically in the Los Angeles area, because we have the highest income tax in the fucking country but when and was the a, highest state athlete tax. But it hasn't worked, because when was the last time a Canadian team won the Stanley Cup? 94. So there we go. All right. Anyway, so uh, I I think we're I think, you know, the Kings are in in decent shape. But like you said, cash strapped. We'll talk to John and we'll figure out if he's got any more. insights. let's start making up a bunch of rumors before John comes up. That way, maybe we can like trick him into talking about stuff. Okay, because he doesn't like to talk about John's a very, very big professional journalist with integrity. He does not speculate. He did, we speculate. We he speculate. does not speculate. Well, we're fans. Yeah, we're, fa- we're a bunch of assholes he, on the internet. He's a fan too, but he actually works for the Kings. Yeah, and he's, <laughs> he's a professional journalist. We are not. We're not. We're not even close. We're not. All right, guys. So um, what's our gift of the day, Albert? All right, guys. Gift of the day. I don't know if you guys are watching the College World Series. You're not watching the College World Series. Nobody watches the College I World Series. I watch that. But it, <laughs> Chris does. But if you're watching highlights of the College World Series, you'll see that this kid was uh, making love to the camera and giving it googly eyes. So And awesome. that's what the Los Angeles fan base slash Lakers are doing to try and attract free agents, they're like, "Hey, come hey, on. how you doing? Why don't you come play in L.A.?" Yeah, yeah. I think that's what that's what they're doing. Well, first it was a is stare it, down. Is it going to work? It's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. We're but gonna... it might work next year when when the cap is going to stop going up and we can do something. Great. Yeah. But anyways, guys, that's been our show. Next week we're gonna have John Rosen on the show. We're gonna talk more uh, free agent stuff, draft stuff. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram now. So all the behind the scenes stuff, you can find us on Instagram at Best Coast Show. We're on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, various podcast outlets. Mm-hmm. Um and what else? That's that. I think that's it. We're I covering think, everything. I think that's it. We've covered everything that we got to cover. Yeah, guys, but that's been our show. Stock us online, and uh, you have a good night.